Well, we're going to have a, a brief commercial again on this morning. And God willing, we'll get back uh, to that, to our series soon. But this morning, I just want to tell us, and as our kids are being dismissed, Sister Shelly, Sister Janelle, thank God for our children, amen? Amen. amen. Thank you, First Lady. Yeah. I just wanted to, to tell us uh, this morning that the Lord is the strength of our life. Is that okay? <laughs> the Lord is the strength of our life. And thank you, Evangelist. Evangelist has been working uh, with getting us uh, our software up and running. So we got to, of course, work out the kinks and do all that. But she's taking on that effort. And I do thank God uh, for her uh, with that. And, and Psalm 27 is where we'll be at on this morning. That's where we're going to hang out. That will be our stumping grounds. Uh, for the duration of this message. But it's just so important to note, even whether it's times like these that we live in, whether we're feeling good, bad, up or down, I can promise us this, that Psalm 27 was true back then, it's true today. We, we, we have champions, like we just sang the song. We know that we're champions already. Sometimes we may not feel like champions, but I can promise you, we are champions through Christ Jesus our Lord. And it, I just want to remind us and hopefully encourage us today that we don't allow the trials and tribulations of life to ever allow us to feel like we're not champions. Amen. Can I just boldly declare that we are champions? We're more than conquerors, not just conquerors. We know what a conqueror is. Come in, win the battle, plant my flag here. I've done a good job. No, we're more than conquerors right, through Christ Jesus who loved us? Let's change our mindset. Can we do that? Can we change our mindset and know that we're more than conquerors? We're warriors. We're spiritual giants. Hallelujah. The devil would love to keep that from us, right? That's right. That's right. He would love to, to keep us in the darkness. And I mean darkness, not in terms of we just cutting off all the lights back there, but hiding something from us. Yeah. Right? We talked about it in Sunday school. There's so much that the Lord has prepared for those that love him. So much on the table. We hear our elders talk about it all the time during testimony service. What God, the great things God has done. And he'll do that for all of us. But we got to be willing to be consistent. Right. Persistent. <laughs> continuing on. Patient endurance. Or aka good old fashioned faith. That's what's required to get the greater things of God. And not give up. Not quit. David in this beautiful song. And Psalm number 27 walks us through a litany of emotions, of feelings, of all of the things that we go through during this walk of life. And he comes to, uh, I, I would say, this consistent declaration that whether my enemies are pursuing me, whether my mother and my father forsake me, whether I got a lot or I don't have that much. I got to depend on the Lord. <laughs> All of my help and my strength comes from the Lord. And the wonderful thing is the Lord never lets us down. Amen. He never lets us down. We may let each other down. We may not come through like we ought to. But God is always there for us. Yeah. Yeah. Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Because of that, whom shall I fear? You know, we're surrounded by darkness in this world. If we're not careful, we'll allow that stuff to, to, to kind of pull on us and drag us down. But even where darkness is, even where people are backbiting, backstabbing, doing all these crazy things to one another, somebody has to step up and let their light shine, right? Like the sun at noonday. Like bright how the sun is at 12 noon when you walk outside. Like, oh, I need my shades. We got to let our light shine. We got to be a city set on a hill. We can't put the candle underneath the bed. The candle got to go and illuminate the whole room. So when we think about the Lord being that light for us, right? He's inside of us. Blows us up. Allows us to be the light so that we can see in a world and in a path where the enemy wants to put darkness in, in, in front of us. Can you imagine being in the woods? I remember I, was, I went fishing with my friends 
about 10, 15 years ago. Hadn't been fishing since. It was a terrible experience. But this is what happened. Maybe I'll go. I'll get brave enough to go again. But back during that time, the kids play 2K now. If you got kids or grandkids or nieces, nephews, you know, they play 2K all the time now. But back then, when 2K, it's NBA 2K, when it first came out, me and my friends used to play it all the time, right? When they first dropped it, this was a long time ago. And that's all we used to do, play 2K. Go to my friend's house, play 2K. It was a good game. It was fun. And one day, one of my older friends, he said, man, let's go fishing. I'm like, nah, the game pretty good, 2K fun. Why we need to go fishing? It's like, man, all you want to do is play 2K. And so they guilt tripped me into going fishing. It was like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, man, I don't want to go fishing. I'm having fun on the game. But he's like, all you want to do is play the game. You've got to have some more adventure. All right, let's go fishing. So he tells me he knows this spot, right? And we get to this spot, and the brother does not know where he's going. It's dark. That's the point I'm making. It's dark. This is before we got the flashlights with the cell phones and all that. So it's just dark. And not only are we, we, we going through these woods, Brother Marcus, the, the sounds now are starting to reverberate around me. I'm hearing all the sounds that I see on TV during the movies. I'm not an adventurous person. That's just not my cup of tea. Some people love the woods. Some people go camping, fishing. That's not my thing. That's just not my thing. So after a long walk, at this point I'm frustrated. I'm ready to fight because I'm so mad. I can't believe y'all got me lost in the woods. 11, 12 o'clock at night, I'm ready to live. And we finally make it to the pond. Can't see a thing, but we going fishing. All right, cool, we here now. We get to the pond, and this boy tells me I forgot the bait in the car. <laughs> one of the guys, one of my friends said, I'm going to stay back and y'all go get it. I said, man, once I get back to the car, I'm gone. I ain't coming back. Matter of fact, he was like, so he, again, he guilt tripped me again, Pastor. Like, he gonna make me walk back in the dark? And, but what I, and I'm sorry, I'm getting so emotional about this story. I'm, I'm allowing this to distract me from the scripture. Let me get back to the point. The main point is, when it's dark, yeah. you can't get nothing done. <laughs> when it's dark, you can't get nothing done. And so if, if what happens is a lot of times the enemy wants us to walk with spiritual blinders on. Yeah, yeah. We have no idea that darkness is really leading us and ruling over our life because we don't know what it's like to be in the light. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Yes, Matter of fact, he's called that light that, that illuminates every man. He lights up every man that comes into the world. But men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because they're easy. Because their deeds were evil. We can't allow that to consume us as the people of God. What does that mean? That means in darkness, when somebody does something to me, I want to figure out immediately how to retaliate against them. This is what David is about to go through. But he's recognizing, I have a father in heaven who fights for me. We don't have to fight as the world fights. Again, we're walking in the light. So our conversation is different. Our manner of life is different. Our talking, the way we treat each other, all that has to be different. And as a light, that means we're going to stand out. And a beautiful thing about being a light is not only that, it's going to draw others to Jesus Christ. The Lord is my light. Not only that, he's my salvation. Whom shall I fear when the Lord is the strength of my life? And that, that's probably my subject today. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And again, even in our weakest moments and when we're feeling discouraged or we're feeling like we're not champions, God steps in and he reminds us, even at the weakest point, he reminds us yes. that he's our strength. Yes, Have you ever had to depend on the strength of the Lord? Yes, man, sometimes things get so crazy and out of whack, and you have to say, Lord, I'm just going to rely on you. I'm just going to lean totally upon you, right? Like that, that's what, faith, if you look up the meaning of, of faith in the Hebrew, it means post, P-O-S-T. 
and it means almost just to lean upon for support. Right? That's, that's what we do when we're having faith in God. We're literally leaning on him, and he catches us. We're 100% reliant upon him. He's the strength and the very thing that holds us up so that we don't fall, so that we don't have to live in discouragement. Man, God holds us even in the most perilous and troublesome times. He's the one that, depend, that we can depend on. He doesn't leave us or desert us. He's there every single time that we call. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, had a mindset to destroy me, guess what happened? They stumbled and fell, not because of me, but because the Lord is my protection. Again, he's my light, and not only that, he's my salvation. He spared my life time and time. Again, fear, death, sickness, disease, wondering what's going to happen to my children. These are the type of things that the enemy tries to put on us, right? Constant fear. What's going to happen tomorrow? What, what am I going to do if this happens? We don't all have enough money to cover this. The Lord steps in as that certainty for us, right? Him being the strength of our life, he erases all doubt and uncertainty. And when we depend on him, we're talking about depending on somebody who 100% can never fail. Yes, amen. Not relying upon our own selves. The Lord is the strength of our life. Even in our weakness, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Even when our enemies, our foes come upon us to eat of our flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident, David says. In what? That the Lord is the strength of my life. It's so beautiful to be able to live in this walk of life and not have to depend on just me. Right? Because I know how I just flub it and mess it up every time. But knowing I have a father who cares for me, who I can depend on, who's there, who has my back, man, one thing, two things, three things. One thing. Oh, one thing. I'm sorry. Thank you, Pastor. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. What's that, David? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all. Oh the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And as I often say, sometimes we just have to bask in the grace of the Lord. Sometimes we have to just look back and let the Lord's grace and mercy speak for itself and admire the work the Lord has done. Again, this is a, an opportunity. David, when he says this, he didn't have the opportunity that we have, right? Right? He didn't have that opportunity, but now we have boldness. Well, we have this fellowship with the Lord that Jesus Christ took down that wall, that barrier that separated us from having fellowship. Now we have boldness because of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we can walk with the Lord every single day, right? We don't have to just worry about getting to the temple. We can actually have him living inside of us because we are the temple. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Do we get that? One thing have I desired of the Lord. I just want that fellowship, that communion with the Lord because he walks with me. He talks with me. Yeah. Tells me that I'm his own. I can hear from the Lord. I can make my request be known to him. Not only that, he answers me. He talks back to me. He corrects me when I'm wrong. He allows me to be humble so that I can obey him and not just be dwelling in my sin. Just one thing I desire. I can commune with him, love and have that relationship with him. Not to take it for granted, right? To be able to just have the Lord talk to us is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up Upon a rock. Again, David is speaking from the perspective of a man that doesn't have any other option. Mm -hmm. 
right? When David's enemies were pursuing him, it's just him most times, right? And if God doesn't step in and be his protection, he's just going to be fooled for his enemies. Can I let us know something? If God doesn't just step in and be our protection, we're just going to be fooled for our enemies. God surrounds us with his protection every single day. When I was little, I used to have that bad of being afraid, of being fearful, of wondering, what is the Lord going to protect me? What if this? I used to have that bad. And the Lord had to show me, boy, you ain't got no control over this. I'm your protection. And the Lord protects us every single day. Whether we're walking to our car or whether we're seven miles up in the sky on the airplane. He's the same God that's going to protect us no matter where we get. Neither one is too hard for him. If our very next breath is in his hands and he cares for us and we know he loves us, he can protect us. He'll keep us. He knows how to give us sweet sleep so that we won't have to worry. He wakes us up, put tender mercies on us every morning. He loves us with an everlasting kindness. This is the God we serve. He hides us. He sets us up upon a rock to where our enemies can't even get to us. Another place, he's, the scripture says, he makes our feet like hinds feet so that we're not moved. Right? We don't have to be tossed all over the, the place with our emotions. We can be certain and stand on the fact that God has our back. And now, verse 6, shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle away sacrifices. <laughs> I will sing, yea, I'll sing praise unto the Lord, just like in our Sunday school lesson. When I think about his goodness, my soul can't help but cry out with a song. Yes. The key may not be perfect like Evangelist and Sister Sheba, but I'm going to get my song out there. First lady make fun of me all the time, but I'm going to sing that song because when God does that and he stirs us up in our heart, man, you can't help but want to shout and scream a hallelujah to the Lord. David says, now that I've been placed on this rock, I'm looking above all my enemies. Everything that the enemy tried to form against me, I've watched it fall flat only because of the Lord. So I got to rejoice in that. I got to give him a song of praise because I recognize had it not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been destroyed a long time. I had no hope. And that's how we are. We're out here in this world. I always say it's almost like being in space without the oxygen tank. Like we're just left out there by ourselves. God steps in as our salvation. God is the one who drags us into salvation. Right? That's what he does for us. Hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me again. Hear, O oh Lord, David says, when I cry with my voice. Anybody had to cry out to God before? Have you ever had to just be at the feet of God and say, Lord, I'm crying. I don't have no other hope. I don't have no other answer. I need you right now. So, Lord, I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you as my father. When I cry with my voice, just hear me. Have mercy upon me and answer me. Sometimes we have to fast. Sometimes we have to pray and really, really, really just get in tune with what the Lord wants for us. Sometimes it's not going to be easy and as simple as we want it and as fast as we want it. Sometimes we're going to have to really get before the Lord so we can know exactly what it is we ought to do. Sometimes we have to really get in, in, in front of the Lord to know what he wants to say to us. It's not going to be one of those things we can get like in the drive through All right? We're going to have to spend some time with the Lord. Spend time in his words. Spend time in prayer, in praise. And when we least expect it sometimes, guess what happened? Before we even realize it, the Lord's already answered. Just because we were obedient. Walking in faith, not being deterred by what's on our left or on our right, but going straight, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Not allowing the distractions of the enemy to get us down. That's all the devil wants to do. Distract us, make us think that the Lord hadn't said what he's already spoken over us. He's spoken things of life over us, blessings, not curses. 
because we are obedient to him and we belong to him, the enemy doesn't want us to have that. So he's constantly pricking, questioning us, trying to get us to veer off course. I see my enemies coming, making me try to doubt God. What am I going to do? What's going to be my response? I know how to have a response when everything is going good. I know how to walk and smile and speak to everybody in the grocery store when I can fill up the cart. Hey, hey, brother, how you doing today? God is good. You need anything? Need an extra couple bucks? I got you today. But when it flips, right? When you're on the run for your life. We may not be on the run like David for his physical life, but what about for your spiritual life? When things are getting hard, when that weight got us down and we feel like he barely is keeping it, like, oh, straining. I'm almost at the point of quitting, Lord. Everything is going awry, it seems like. I've been doing what you said to do. I've been trying to get into my word more. I've been trying to pray a little harder. I've even praised. I've made a fool out of myself. You know I can't sing and dance, but I've been singing and dancing for you, Lord. And it seems like things have gotten worse. Where are you, Lord? David says, hear me when I cry unto you. Sometimes we feel like the Lord not answering because it's like things just keep staying the same. It's like, Lord, just please hear me. Not only hear me, but answer me. I need you. But we, that's when our faith has to step in, right? Mm -hmm. That's when our faith has to kick in. You know, like when in the, in the old car we used to have to play the video games, you hit the turbo button, like that, that little boost you <laughs> need to get back. So now I, I love being in this position, right? That I'm going to embrace this because I know God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. So where the enemy wants me to quit and I know it's looking bad, I know the devil's tactics now, so my praise is going to increase. Yes, yes. Even though I'm weighing down, my faith is going to go through the roof because I know what the Lord has promised me. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. The Lord cannot lie. I know what he's promised to his children and I want it. I want to live. I want to believe to see the goodness of the Lord right now in the land of the living. I don't have to wait till I get to heaven. I want to dominate right now. I want to have the abundant life right now. I want to walk as a king in his kingdom right now because he said I could do it. He would have never had to come and destroy the works of the enemy if he didn't want me to have this life. So it looks bad, bro, Marcus, but guess what? I'm still going, hey, brother, you doing all right? You need anything? The Lord is good, y'all, even though it's looking hellacious in my life. I'm going to get to, I'm going to fight through it, right? I'm going to bask in the fact that the Lord is perfect and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. I know my testimony is going to be powerful because I know what he promised and he cannot lie. Come on, devil. That's, that's what we, that's, that has to be our mindset as champions. Yeah, the devil come, keep coming. You're defeated. You have no authority, no say so in my life. We are champions. We have the victory on our physical bodies. Jesus told us that we're healed by his stripes. We've already been healed. We can walk where the scripture says our natural forces are not abated. Our eyesight don't have to wax dim. Our bodies don't have to ache. We can feel good when we wake up and lift up holy hands and say, thank you, Lord, for another morning. I can be a, a spiritual giant. I can pray to the Lord, even if where I've never prayed before. We've heard that just one people have told us they never prayed before. I can pray now and have boldness in talking to the Lord. I can praise like never before. I can raise my children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. I can be peaceable with men. Where I used to snap off, I can walk in peace. I can show a little temperance now. I can practice patience now. I can walk in love through not just my family members and my friends, but I even know how to love my enemies now. I'm growing up because I'm spending time with the Lord. I'm recognizing what he has before me, and I'm getting it all. Adversity sometimes is good. Sometimes we need a little kick in the behind to get us what we need to be without complaining about it. 
Sometimes the Lord is just realizing this boy ain't never going to get it. I'm just going to have to go ahead and, and beat him into it. So he'll, he'll give us a little spanking to get us to go where we need to go. Mm -hmm. We don't have to despise chasing. We don't have to despise the Lord's chasing. He has something for us. I remember when Kobe had said, you know, when, when Kobe and Shaq, and Lizzie will know this because that's her favorite team, but when Kobe and Shaq first split up, everybody was mad at Kobe because Shaq is Shaq, the most dominant player on the inside. Nobody could stop him. And so the Lakers chose Kobe because Kobe was younger. He had more of an upside, more years left. They traded away Shaq, and everybody was mad at Kobe, right? And so Shaq goes to Miami, his second year with Miami, he wins a title. He wins a ring with Miami, not LA. And they really began to pour on Kobe. Then, see, Dr. Bus, I told you you should have never let go of Shaq. Now he's stuck with Kobe. And Kobe said, I needed that. I needed everybody to say, you made the right decision. Then when he said, as soon as Shaq won that title, he went to work out. That moment. He said, I needed that adversity. What happened? Kobe came back and won two more titles and ended up with one more than Shaq. Sometimes we got to embrace that adversity because it's an opportunity for God to show who he is in our lives. Everybody just can't be sitting in, and having all peaches and cream every day. How can we know God is who he say he is if he don't ever have to deliver us out of some circumstances? Somebody got to be the one to go through it. Why not his people who he's chosen and has put his name in our hearts? The book of Revelation says, as a matter of fact, it's sealed in our foreheads. We belong to him. Got his stamp on us. We belong to him. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, what? Okay, thy face, Lord, will I seek. So hide not your face far from me. Put not your servant away in anger, for thou hast been my help. <laughs> Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Verse 10 says, even when my mother and my father forsake me, Guess what? The Lord will take me up. We have to seek the Lord's face at all times, David says. You the one told me, Lord, you told me to get before you, to kneel down before you, to put my heart on doing your way, right? The flesh, darkness, it's going to want us to do things a certain way. But being in the light, that means we have to do things God way. So David says, I'm going to seek to do things your way. You told me, obey your commands. Fear you. Obey what you said. You said you was going to come through for me if I just wait and be patient. So don't leave me now, Lord. I need you. You know it's getting a little thick out here. I've done what you've asked me to do, so don't leave me now. Anybody else can go. Anybody else can forsake me. Anybody else can leave me alone, but I'll be fine if you just stand up strong for me, Lord, because I know that you're there. Mother and father can forsake me. Family, friends can forsake me. But I'm depending on you because you'll take me up when everybody else is gone. That should be encouraging for all of us. There's going to be times when we feel like, man, am I the only one? In this whole world, I'm, I feel like Will Smith on I Am Legend, the last man in the whole world. But God always reminds us. He always sends us some help. Just like in the movie, I've been quoting movies and sports all day. But just like in the movie, Will found out later, he had a whole bunch of people out there that were still alive. He wasn't the last man. So just like God told Elijah, I got, how many was it, Pastor? That hadn't bowed their uh, knee to bail? He had them reserved for himself. So Elijah, you weren't the only one. And th that's how God encourages us. Sometimes we feel like, I'm, I'm done, I'm out here alone, and God will send us encouragement when we least expect it through a person that we may not even know. Or the person who we may have least even expected it from. That's just how God does it. I think that's how awesome he is. 
God does things his way. We, we flock to the people that we may want, right? Like how when Samuel was anointed for the king, they said, oh, he's a good looking guy. He's tall. He looked like a king. We sometimes gravitate, gravitate to people that we think will make a good friend for us, right? Oh, that's a good friend. We seem like we'll get, good, get along good together. And God has prepared these wonderful friendships for us and made us brothers and sisters in Christ with people we don't have nothing in common, may have never even spoken to each other in the street, and we become the best of friends, brothers and sisters, because that's the way God does a thing. He does things his way. And we've discovered that his way is the best way. We have our own way of wanting to do it, but God does things the best way for us. He works it out to our good. Teach me thy way. I'm almost done with four more verses. Verse 11 of Psalm number 27. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me how? In a plain path because of my enemies. The scripture says that the steps of a righteous man, the steps of a just man are what? Ordered by the Lord. That has to be our prayer, saints, every morning, every day that we face. We don't want to go out in this world on our own again. Everybody else can forsake us, but we need to go out equipped with the Lord riding on us. The Lord orders our steps. We have our, our own will. We say it all the time in our church that we should pray that the Lord's will be done, not our own. Even as Jesus did. Why is that important? Because we know our will is just to get us in trouble. It's just to sin. Sin again, then sin some more. That's, that's the will of man. We see it in the book of Genesis, that the thoughts of his heart is only evil continually and consistently. So we put the Lord before us, right, to make a plain path. We say, matter of fact, Lord, just order my steps. I need to be able to walk like I'm a king, and, and the Lord has made me a king, so I'm going to walk in, in a plain path, a plain path, path that's prepared for me. So even if the obstacles come, that path is still prepared for. I'm smooth. I'm walking with confidence. My steps are ordered by the Lord. It's not just happening. We're not just waking up and saying, look, I don't know what's going to happen today. Just another day. No, Lord, today is the day that he's made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, order my steps today in your word. Order my steps according to your will. Let me be a blessing. Even as you put laborers in my path to bless me, let me be a laborer in somebody else's path today. Teach me to reach out and to help somebody today. Allow me opportunity to, to do good to somebody. Lord, protect me wherever I go. Give your warning angels charge over me. Let me acknowledge you in all my ways, oh God. Help me to not sin against you today. Order, not chaos, not uncertainty, but God gives us order. He gives us a plain path yeah. so we can walk in victory. Yes. Walking like kings and queens that he's made us to be. Right. We don't have to settle for anything less. Lord, order my steps in your word. I don't want my own way to be done. I don't want my own will to be done. I need you to divinely intervene. And if I'm riding with the Lord, the Lord just cares me to speak. I can just get on his back. Yeah. I know I'll be okay. Yeah. Amen. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. Again, deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. The scripture says that we talked about this with Abel. Why did Cain kill Abel? Because his works were unrighteous and his brothers were righteous. His works was evil. His brother's works were good. That's simple. The, uh, the, the enemies of God do not want him to be glorified in this world. And that's our purpose. So how does he stop that? He stops us from fulfilling our purpose and thereby snatching the glory from the Lord because he wants the glory. So God is telling us and we have to glorify him. And in doing so, that means believing in him through the good times, believing in him through the bad times, trusting him no matter what, keep going even when we want to faith, relying upon him. That way the will of our enemies cannot be done in our lives. We can rely on the will of the Father. 
in the will of the Father, he tells us, I know what I've prepared for you. I know the thoughts that I have toward you. If we know that the thoughts that God has toward us, how precious they are, how good they are, yea and amen to our prayers, we wouldn't settle for anything less. We would walk boldly in that victory. Waking up every day with a heart of expectation, right? Every day that the Lord allows us to be here is a blessing. Every single day. We don't have to be that, but we wake up and just be able to see the sunrise. Oh my goodness, Lord, it's another day that you made. Thank you. If you left me here and you woke me up again, that means you have something planned for me. And it got to be victorious, right? It got to be something good because you didn't just leave me here to be down and depressed and despondent. You, I know you prepare a victory, Lord, so order my steps and let me walk in it today, right? Expectation. We have to expect good things to happen. We can't just expect terrible things. We just want to look at the terrible things. Those are the things that's going to seek us out. Right? We just only expect bad things to happen. It always has to be something to, to destroy us. It always has to be something to overtake us. That's what we're going to have. If we don't know that God has granted us the victory over these things, no matter how little or great, We'll settle for allowing the devil to just do whatever he wants. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. And, and again, Jesus says the scripture had to be fulfilled when he came that they hated me without a cause. I, I, the enemies of God are bent on just getting God's people to say that he's not good. That he's not who he's saying he is. And when that 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 uh, adversity comes, it's meant to steal God's glory. Mm -hmm. That's what it's meant to do. Yeah. David says, I had fainted. Mm -hmm. I had fainted, quit, clocked out, gave up, dropped right down, then and there, wow. threw up both my hands, <laughs> knocked out of the race, wow. lost. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord right here in the land of the living. Believed to see. It may not be in front of me right now. Right now, my enemies are pursuing me. Right now, I don't see a way out. But I'm still believing to see it because God has promised it. You remember Jonah? When Jonah got thrown overboard? Went through all those crazy things out there on the sea? And even as he's in the midst of drowning and losing his own life, he says, I'm going to still look back towards your holy temple. Yeah. Right? Like, even in the, in the most vile circumstances, it's amazing to me that God can still show up and put his foot down and show that he's God. Sometimes, pastors, would you say he'll wait till 1159? 59. It's like, Lord, I, woo, you couldn't get close this time. But he never fails. It's like, man, and sometimes we just don't get it. We'll repeat the same lessons over and over and over again. The Lord deliver us, and we'll be back to down. Like, Lord, are you going to do this? And he comes and do it, does it again. And we get another, Lord, are you going to come through it? And he does it again. And he's always trying to convince us that he's God. It's not like you and me. He don't fail. He's God. He's a triumphant king. We read in our Sunday school school lesson today that he's a man of war. He wars on behalf of his people. Yes. He's not going to let the enemy triumph over us. The Lord is our light. He's our salvation. He's the strength yes. of our life. He's Again, he's the one that we lean on and depend on. He's the one that holds us up like the post. Yes. When we're weak, he's the one that holds us up. It's almost like the a, a father holding their baby. You ever seen a you ever seen a father that's that's big and then this little baby that's small and the baby just leans against the father's chin like that's how God that he literally just wraps his arms around us yes. and walks us even through the valley of the shadow of death. He's shielding everything. We don't even know about we sleep. We asleep under his wings and he's carrying us over adversity, over troubled waters, and he's hiding us in his Last person I'll be doing. 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Thank you, David, for encouraging us. Wait on the Lord. Sometimes it's just, you know, it's easy if everything's just being thrown at us. It's cool. Everything's moving the way we want it to move. Sometimes we have to wait. Patient endurance. Wait on the Lord. And while we're waiting, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Meaning despite all the things that I've read, all the things that I've been through, all the things that's going on, if I can just hold on, wait and watch, believe to see, the Lord cannot fail. If I fail, it's because of, of me, it's my fault. The Lord's not going to fail. All he wants us to do is just wait, watch, whatever we're believing God for. Right? We, we heard it in our testimonies, whether that's believing God for a new job, right? For a family member, for a healing, for something financially, whatever it is, to know him more, to leave behind old sin and old habits. We've seen if we just, just wait. And not only wait, not wait and complain or wait and murmuring, but waiting, being encouraged or of good courage, knowing that God is going to work, having that faith and that fervor of knowing, man, God's going to work it out. I can't wait till you work it out. I know it's going to be good. Wait on the Lord. Amen? Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for you being our light. Being the strength of our life, even when we've been weak, even when we should have lost, Lord, you've given us the victory. You've even kept us from our enemies, Lord, hid us in your pavilion. We thank you that even in our weakness, you've been strong. We honor you for that, Father. We thank you for forgiving us and cleansing us what we've done wrong, taking away our sins, allowing us to repent and be more like you, Father. Thank you that we have we can have a closer relationship with you, to know how to trust you, even where things don't look as good as we want it to look. Teach us how to wait on you, Lord. How to be of good courage. How to wait and believe to see the goodness of the Lord right now in the land of the living. We know you care for us, Lord. We know you can and you're able. And so we receive it right now in Jesus' name. Forgive us uh, well, we, we haven't had the faith that we should have, or we haven't waited for you, or we tried to do it on our own. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to wait on you, Lord. We want to be dependent totally upon you because we know that you care for us, Father. Thank you for never leaving us, never forsaking us. No matter what happens, you've always been right there, and you protect us and you take us up. Thank you for protecting us even over the enemy. He would try to destroy us. We know that Peter, the devil tried to sift him and had a desire to sift him as wheat, but you prayed for him that his faith would fail not. So we want that same prayer over us, Lord. We don't want our faith to fail. We want to be uh, strong. We want to practice patient endurance. We want to get to every single thing that you have for us so that we can walk in your victory and most of all, bring you glory, oh God. How can we bring you glory if we quit, if we faint, if we give up? But we want to believe to see the goodness of the Lord. We thank you for the things you prepared for us. We receive them by faith in Jesus' name. All the things that you have, the good things that are precious, we believe that we receive them right now in the precious and holy name of Jesus. We give you the praise, glory, and the honor for it. Asking you to take this word, allow us to apply it to our lives, to hide deep in our heart that we don't sin against you. We pray that you will be glorified in everything that we say and do going forward. We give you the thanks, praise, glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What do you got, Pastor? Well, come on, come on.